second chance just to do again I feel sad broken strings cause you play me like a violin shame on me for all your seven deadly sins had it all but you craved attention drowning me in your own reflection put me down just to see me get back up again six feet under and you're ready to give all the pain if I was your This isn't real, now we're over Six feet old, there's nothing left here anyway We used to talk, but now we don't know what to say Now we're just two passive strangers Who tried you like goodbye forever Put me down just to see me get back up again Six feet under and you're ready to give all the pain If I was your new addition
Welcome into the Boise State Game Pants Esports Arena, watching our coverage of play versus Collegiate Overwatch. Boise State looking to pick up another win tonight, remain undefeated against Colorado Mesa. We'll also have some NACE action coming up later tonight. I am Michael Fish Fisher. Joining me to call all of the action is Colby D'Angelo Alloway and D'Angelo. We should have a good one on our hands tonight. We've heard a lot about Colorado Mesa. Been told they are 11-0 in all of their combined tournaments coming into tonight. So we should expect maybe at least the first real challenge in play versus for Boise State because we've seen a lot of rolls, a lot of 3-0s. Maybe Colorado Mesa can change that here tonight. That's definitely what we're looking for is Boise State's first real challenge that hopefully turns into a Boise State win because, mm -hmm. I mean, of we're course. definitely always here for that too. But... I'm kind of, I'm really excited to cast some hopefully like I love the Boise State team very much. I would be very excited to see them get punished for going <laughs> 1v6 against the enemy team True. or things like that. Yeah. Because that's just those are just not good habits that are not going to help you against these other higher level teams that we will eventually encounter even if it's not tonight. 100% agree with you. Boise State has had some very interesting uh, plays that so far in play versus and in NACE, just due to how the tournaments work out. We have not seen that, but play versus one of those tournaments where it is a Swiss bracket, so you play better and better teams each week. Both teams undefeated, so we'll see who comes out on top. Boise State and Colorado Mesa. And play versus also one of those unique events that decides that everyone loves assault. So let's take a look at the event card and see exactly the order we're going to play these maps in, because no matter what the score is, we are guaranteed to see Assault because it is best of five. The higher seed will pick map one. I've told Boise State has picked Lijong Tower. After that, the map loser will pick. But the real focus is on the map order, which is Control, Assault, Escort, Hybrid, Control. Everything pretty standard except for that Assault map getting moved from number four up to number two. I know a lot of players are very uh, outspoken, D'Angelo, about Assault. It's not something you can really control. What is do you think about putting Assault guaranteed to be played no matter the outcome of a series, whereas some tournaments, it's like, well, it's the fourth map, so if you get a 3-0, you might never see Assault. By other players, do you mean yourself, Fish? Because I have not heard one player who likes Assault, unless you're going to tell me you like Assault. I'm fine with some Assault maps. Some of them are better than others. I okay, think if you're going to play Assault, then play Temple of Anubis, and I think you'll be okay. It is getting replaced, if that um, needs to tell you all that you need to know about Assault. It's yes, being replaced it's in April by Overwatch 2. <laughs> but we're also going 5v5. That's true. I'm just saying, like, Assault so is so hated that it is the only map that is changing. That's In fair. Overwatch 2, instead of being like, hey, let's remove playing Control twice, we'll add a new map. Now nah, it's like, let's just get rid of Assault. But again, I, I, the one thing I will say is I do like the fact that we get to see some of the maps. Because sometimes, especially with how Boy State's been playing in Nace, we never see Assault because Assault's the fourth map in Nace. Yeah. It's 3 0. So I do like the fact we're going to see him. I would assume, I know Boise State will almost always pick Temple of Anubis, so if, you know, we talked about, expected to be a very good team in Colorado Mesa. They are 11-0 so far this year. If they win control, we would expect maybe Temple of Anubis from the other, from Boise State side. I don't know what they're going to pick. On the other, the one bright thing, though, by playing hybrid fourth, we might not see King's Row. 
We might not that's be a good trade off. Ah, yes, and that's entirely what. Oh, you, so you'd rather play in your mind an inferior general map <laughs> than just King's Row in general? I've seen too much King's Row. King's Row is played way too often. But let's get to the map. We know it is Lee Jock Tower, and let's get to Doc's keys of the game as well in Overwatch, which are never take a fair fight. What does that mean? Take fights at unexpected places when they are unprepared, and tempo, tempo, tempo. Doc's keys brought to you by Drop In Gaming. Drop In Gaming is the premier online platform for gamers who seek competition. Play your favorite games to win cash and prizes through free and paid entry matches and tournaments. Whether you're new to the scene or a seasoned veteran, Drop In Gaming has the right games and competition for you. To begin your competitive gaming journey, sign up at dropingaming.com. Start with Lee Zhang Tower, Boise State. They got the first map, pick the edge. So what are you expecting for Boise State? Maybe comp-wise, maybe starting off-wise on Lee Zhang Tower once we hop into this map. I expect for us to come out 100% ready to go against this 11-0 and team. Mm -hmm. We were told that they were a good team. We were to told to come at them with our best. So I expect probably a Symmetra from the Boise State just because that's something that we've practiced running a lot and we have a lot of success mm -hmm. running when we do so. I also expect... I expect Symmetras on both teams and then whoever wins the first fight will immediately have to swap off all that. Just, you know, that's what happens when you pick a Symmetra. Yeah. But I expect Boise State to go at this not 1v6, but 6v6. And honestly, that's what I'm most excited for, Fish. Yeah, and I expect to see maybe for the first time we get to see Boise State's full lineup on the street, which would be Plato, Kel, Goblin, Maxwell, <laughs> Large Bagel, and Chosen should all be there, as you see right there. Maybe not. Maybe Frost will actually be in. Well, we will have to see. I know there's always classes involved, so it's hard to say. But today's lineup brought to you by Count. Count's identity trust global network delivers real-time fraud prevention, account protection, enables a personalized customer experience for more than 9,000 leading brands and payment providers. There is your Boise State lineup. We've seen a lot of them. I will say... Chosen's the one player we haven't seen a whole lot of yet, D'Angelo, so far this year. He's kind of been maybe those one of those early to sub out. So I'm very excited to see this full Boise State lineup. So I, some said maybe the seventh best collegiate Overwatch team in the country, according to some polls that came out today. Very excited to see this team all in their attorney in action tonight here, at least in our first map. We see a very important switch there. Maxwell in for Frost. So this is the Boise State. So we see Chosen, which is very, very interesting yes. and fantastic. And Chosen is finally getting some play time. It might hurt Chosen a little bit that they haven't gotten as much play time against this, what is supposed to be a higher ELO, higher skill level team. But Boise State is very clearly coming out, just as you saw there, with the A team right now, Fish. This is their top starters. We are not yeah. messing around. Boise State wants to take it to Colorado Mesa. Somebody. It's their first loss in play versus tonight. Will be Boise State, will be Colorado Mesa, the Mavericks. We are about to find out. We will hop in to Lee Zhang Tower here. Have to assume Boise State in the blue with that semester. Colorado Mesa in the red. Immediately the Broncos hop right on top of the point. Trading some spam out. Shield about to be broken there for the Colorado Mesa main tank on the Reinhardt. We get some great symmetric turrets. They have to turn around. They turn their back to Boise State. And immediately, Unknown goes down. Zero, the next one, looks like he's going to have to fall. Immortality Field is going to be forced to come out there from Boise State. So far, Boise State has not lost a single member. And those symmetric turrets set up a great start. That was a nice little sleep on the Goblin by Funk, Phys Funk Physics. That was a nice little sleep on the Goblin, but it ultimately wasn't very impactful because their D.Va insta-woke him and then he proceeded to get a 4K, so that's got to feel real bad if you're that on him. Very curious to see what Colorado Mesa wants to do. They already have the Nano up. We'll see what they can combo it with. Nothing else even close. Plato has another shatter. He hasn't been great at landing them, but he's had them all the time. Unknown gonna get that the end of the shatter will not fall post on barrier gonna come down immediately cut the side did half this goblin picks up another kill onto rjb's he picks up one more onto zero who can stop this doom fist the answer appears to be nobody kel sends back to spawn and hunter will go back as well as goblin i think has picked up like 80 percent of boys can kill lizzie state came in not messing around at all and colorado mesa was not and is not ready for it they're swapping to the mccree because they recognize that the Doomfist is a problem, which is more than some teams we've seen so far. But we'll see if it actually helps. And walking into Cal's Provenic Flux, I don't know that they're going to get a ton of compliments. There's no alt even close for Colorado Mesa Goblin. 
Gonna look to hop right in there, has the Meteor Strike. Gonna be immediately popped at, look at they drop right on top of Colorado Mesa. It's a triple kill for Goblin, the Gravitic Flux picks up two more. And Boise State gets a team kill. The Gravitic Flux that I mentioned before the fight actually felt like a little bit much after Goblin used his ultimate and got that triple K there. So, but now we're going into final fight with no ultimates of our own, with the exception of amplification, which was used correctly to try to stop them from getting there. Ooh, nice stay wall there. Tries to force Boise State on the wrong side of the Diva Bomb, but it's not going to matter. Goblin gets that headshot on Twitter. The sound barrier comes down from a large bagel, and Boise State is going to get a great pick on RJ Beast. The Nano will go down on to zero. Blizzard will come out over time here. Boise State will lose their first member of the map at 99%. Poor Maxel stops what would have otherwise been a perfect map for Boise State. I gotta say, Maxwell was the price for 100-0, uh, only one limb on the enemy team, map. So, you know, he was bad for Maxwell to be that one <laughs> limb that they got. But ultimately, I think Boise State was in fighting form against Colorado Mason. Boise State came to play, as we mentioned, Colorado Mesa, been told by several people to expect a very strong team, 11-0 in their other tournaments, but right now, that 11-0 uh, start looks to be in jeopardy, at least if that first map was any indication. We'll kick off our second map here on Lijok Tower, and what does Colorado Mesa need to do quickly to Angelo in this first fight to be able to challenge Boise State? Well, Headhunter needs to recognize that he's not going to be able to 1v1. Oh, no. Ooh, not that. Oh, no. What a great read by a large bagel. He predicts the Symmetra teleporter. Gets a double boop on both supports, and it's another team kill. Second map, same as the first. That was, I'm honestly not shocked. I saw Bagel going for the rollout. We know Bagel's a good Lucio. They were teleporting right in front of that, and I just, I felt it before it even came in, and then of the two people to get moved, the Baptiste and the enemy Lucio, the ultimate Lucio dishonor to be booped off the map by the enemy. That's gotta feel real bad for it, Mesa. See what the Mavericks can do here in their second fight. Trying to avoid maybe a boop off the edge. It looked like Bagel tried to go for a cheeky one there. Wasn't quite able to find it. The Maywall kind of going to cancel out all that damage. Immortality Field also forced down, but another boop onto Headhunter. Large Bagel's turn to pop off. Chosen's going to get one more. Make it four boops in two fights for a large Bagel. Uh, I, there's no words. That's a third of the team each fight that a large Bagel has just Solo booped off the map there. So I, you know, you gotta be feeling bad if you're Colorado Mesa right now. Yeah, I, I don't know what you do. Like you can say, you know, choose better fights. You just gotta get better positioning at this point. They Don't do. stand by the end. It's a little bit hard on Lee Jung. Honestly, it's, especially when you're going from the inside like they were, I am genuinely shocked that Bagel was able to catch some of them out because this is supposed to be a higher level team. It's not very higher level to come through indoors and still manage to get boots off the map. How? I'm not even gonna ask how you die to a dead eye as a Reinhardt. That just seems almost illogical. Oh no. yeah! How does that feel, Fish? Uh, a dead eye was just used to win the fight there. I'm just. They had. I guess they got baited out by the May Wall. I was. They had the shield up. I was like, okay, that's not gonna find anything. I will cue the laugh track, but. I guess Goblin's the one who gets the real laugh as we get the Ant Matrix gonna go down there from Chosen. A great Maywall though will block it off this time. But Boise immediately rips through it. And Colorado Mace is gonna get one last fight here. They're gonna take the long way around. They have the sound barrier, they have the blizzard, and a photon barrier will start things off. Cut off that Ant Matrix. It's a triple kill Diva Bomb for Kel. If Boise State is in complete command, they will even force Colorado Mesa to knock it on the point. They might have actually had a perfect map this time. It was hard to tell. But overall, a fantastic job by Boise State, a 2-0. Don't forget that Boise State Esports is always looking for talented players, production and broadcast talent. Top talent along with good grades and eligibility can earn you scholarships as well. Sign up today by visiting boisestate.edu slash esports for more info. Well, um, we were told one thing. We saw a different thing, D'Angelo. Boise State, I thought, played a lot fundamentally better 
but uh, Colorado Mesa fell victim to a lot of very, very uh, simple things, it felt like. I do <laughs> agree with that 100% fish. But while we're railing on Colorado Mesa, I will say a bright spot for them has been zero on the May. Yeah. There has not been an ultimate where a wall has been attempted to shut down that ultimate. And there's really only so much you can do as May to shut down the entire enemy team. But zero has definitely been trying. And so I do think we should give credit where credit is due, even though their team is getting rolled. Yeah, zero. I think you're right. Zero has been has been good. Besides getting booped off the edge, I don't think RJ has been too bad at all. But uh, looks like we're just gonna hop right into assault. There, we're not even gonna go anywhere. It's gonna be on Volskaya. Interesting choice. I mean, you said you like Temple Anubis, so I guess your opinion on Volskaya and how you think Colorado Mesa can use this Volskaya pick to maybe get back in this series. Well, they're not going to get booped off the map except in a couple of places. Right off their spawn, maybe. So that's. <laughs> I was about to say. Um, I hope Bagel doesn't go for it because they're supposed to be a very high skill, high elo team. And so just because that first map did not go well for them does not mean that they are not capable <laughs> of punishing Bagel if he decided to camp outside their spawn. So I hope he doesn't. But We've done it before on Volskaya. He's done it before, and I would not put it past him to do it again, especially after how that first map went. So, but other than that, you can't really get booped off True. the map from the point, which is something that <laughs> happened to them yeah. quite a few times, that second Li Zhang map there, and that was very unfortunate. So they can't do that. Yeah. Which that is mean, good for them. There, there are some small positives, have been told, actually. We will throw it to a quick break. We'll be back with map number two. Boise State <laughs> take it on Colorado Mesa. Can the Mavericks make it a game, or will Boise State end their 11-0 streak? We will find out all of that after this. NationalGuard.com to begin your guard adventure. Here are a couple lessons I've learned over the years. Friendships come in all shapes and sizes. And always buckle up. Seatbelts save lives. That's a rule we can all live by. into the Boise State Gay Pants Esports Arena watching our coverage of play versus collegiate overwatch. Boise State got a dominating win on Lijong Tower. We'll see now what happens on Volskaya, which is what Colorado Mesa has picked for our second map. Fish and D'Angelo here call it all of the action and, you know, positives again. Colorado Mesa can't really get booped off the edge on Volskaya D'Angelo, so they've got that going for them. Zero has had some phenomenal plays on the May that might be able to catapult them to a couple of 
wins in a team fight, maybe you get the first point. I mean, we've talked about how snowball-y assault can be. Very curious to see how Boise State adapts because, as like you said, we, we came in expecting a very talented team. Again, this Colorado Mitchell team is 11-0, so we cannot underestimate them, but it felt like a uh, little overmatched on Lee Zhang, so I'm curious if Boise State starts to fall back into those bad habits that you alluded to at the start of the broadcast, D'Angelo, some 1v6 attempts, some camping in the spawns, or if Boise State will still be back, make sure maybe map one wasn't a fluke, because some teams are just not very good at control. It happens, so I'm very curious to see how Boise State approaches this map, and this will go a long test to show how mentally prepared Boise State was, because they take it seriously, D'Angelo. I think it's a good thing, but I'm worried we might get some trolling or, or whatever you want to say when Goblin plays. <laughs> Team kills, that's what we want yeah, to say. Yeah, I when mean, goblin you know, plays. That's 6v1, what we want to say goblin either gets. Four man. He does, he does get those. Yeah. He does get quite a few team kills. Either team kills or he dies solo, and you're like, God, Goblin, what are you doing? <laughs> He hasn't done that tonight yet. <laughs> not fish. yet. Not yet. He didn't have many chances on Lee Zhang. But it's very, yep. As we get ready for a full sky up, again, let's talk about the Colorado Mesa. You know, let's, let's, we want, we, as a caster, I always want to see a game. What comp can they come out in on Volskaya, in your opinion, D'Angelo, to maximize where we've seen them play the best? I definitely think they want to keep zero on that May, and they want to keep their Ana. Mm -hmm. Because Funky is doing actually a really good job on Ana. They charged Nano first fight in a fight where some of the members of their team were completely rolled, but that Ana was able to charge their an Nano in a single fight, so I think you want to keep that Ana, and you want to keep Zero on May, because I think those two are the bright spots for Colorado Mesa here, mm -hmm. and I think if they're going to try to pull the win out of this, or at least make it a game, more of a game than the first map was, yeah, that's what you're going to have to do. Because even as Goblin like came at the Ana, she slept him a good number of times. Like She did her job as Ana. That's your job. Sleep the Doomfist that's trying to dive you. If other people insta wake him up and he gets a triple kill, <laughs> That's, That's not, not the fault of the no. Ana. That is the fault of the Diva that woke him up. Well, let's hop into game number two. Boise State, Colorado Mesa. Broncos look to be defending. We will see if the roster has changed. Boise State has several options available if need be. And I think the one thing for Colorado Mesa is Headhunter just needs to pick a champion or hero and stay on it, D'Angelo. We saw, I mean, Sombra, McCree, Farah. Just pick something and stay on it. Got to get some value out of those heroes eventually, not just be like, well, that one didn't work. Let me try something else. That's true, but I also think Headhunter is trying to outskill Goblin on an individual level. And when you get headshot out of the sky as Farah, yeah, I thanks. don't buy Jinkus. I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think it's going to Well, Boise State's going to start the fight. Plato will jump down. It is the same roster for the Broncos here. We do get an immortality field already put down from Funk Physics, who was fantastic on that honor. We'll see what they can do on the Baptiste. So far, Boise State looking for their first elimination. As I say, Kel gets one. A huge double anti from Chosen is going to take down RJB's Goblin on that ass. Going to force a retreat away for the rest of Colorado Mesa. Boise State is still taking this very seriously. None of them are taking risks that they don't have to. And we still have the whole 18. Some people that haven't gotten a lot of play but are very high ELO players. We still have all of them Ooh. in. Oh, Goblin, no. Talked about zero, one of the few bright spots for Colorado Mesa. It's a great headshot there on the Goblin. Boy State does not have a revive. There is a solo immortality field that only landed on the Funk Physics. I have to wonder where that ended up going. As we see Plato is going to get an elimination or get credited for one as Kel picks one up. You see the Primal Rage immediately going to be used there to heal back up to fullest. Kel has picked up a double kill for themselves, and now Boise State looks to be in complete command. Funk Physics will go down. This will be a full reset here for Colorado Mesa. Baptiste is not Funk Physics' hero here. I will just say that. We were complimenting them on their Ana. I will say their Baptiste is not good in every way that their Ana is good. I have not seen a successful immortality come out of this Baptiste when they really needed it. And at that point, just get off the Baptiste and go back to Ana. Boise State does have three alts up. While Colorado Mesa just has the Ant Matrix for Funk Physics, so we'll have to see when he chooses to use it. Gonna Pulse Bomb and a Nano from Boise State. They immediately eliminate RJB. You can see the rest of the health bars for Colorado Mesa are not in good order. They immediately are forced to reset there. And actually, it looks like the Diva will go off yet. I will say that Funk Physics did a good job of charging his Ant Matrix, but that's just something that you do. I mean, Baptiste does a ton of healing. 
Funk physics should not be on Baptiste. Their Baptiste is not worth it, especially compared to the value that they are capable of getting on on it. If you can't field as Baptiste, you really should not play. Huge dynamite there for Goblin. We got a ton of ults up. We'll see how Colorado Mesa wants to use them. As we get the grab, gonna come out from Cal Boise State. Gonna just spam in. They can attack Visor and a oh, huge no. sound barrier. Deep Bomb takes out Chosen, but they'll trade it one for one with Headhunter. The Dragon Strike gonna come through and just murder Goblin. But who cares about the Ash when Bob picks up a double kill? Rally comes out from a large bagel, and that should be enough to wrap things up here. A ton of balls used, but somehow not the Ant Matrix. Goblin was the prize, but ultimately it was the prize for a phenomenal fight win, and we still have ultimates, and it looks like Boise State is getting back into some of those bad 1v6 habits. I mean, Tracer is a hard hero to punish for it, but Boise State is steadily taking Colorado Mesa less seriously. 30 seconds left here. Colorado Mesa has even gotten on top of the point. Max is going to get a huge pull as well, but it's not going to be able to land. Colorado Mesa is going to get a fitting flank here by Plato, who dies with the primal rage available. This is a huge pick for RJ Beast and the rest of this Maverick squad. Headhunter barely hanging on. Kel will make that a one for one trade. Final chance here for Colorado Mesa to get on to this point on Volskaya, continue the game, but a great pick on to RJB, plus a double ante on the both the tanks. Makes it very hard for the Mavericks to recover. Kel on a 15 player kill streak, and Mesa won't even get to the point. Boise State will hold them absolutely scoreless here on the first round of assaults. If Boise State continues to not take Colorado Mesa seriously, they might be able to pick up maybe this round or a map off of them. Because if you'll notice, the couple of times where they're not taking them seriously, they got punished. Like Plato went into that room by himself, which is not something he would do against, which is not something he would have done first map, mm -hmm. but that he's doing now. And he got immediately punished for it, especially died with that primal rage. I I don't think Boise State is in a position where they can completely relax yet because they're getting punished whenever they do. So it seems like Boise State is just rolling, but if they let up that at all, their players get individually punished for that. Get ready to hop into the second round of Assault. We see Funk Physics on the Moira now. They can play it a little bit better than the Baptiste. I like the... Out, oh, they're back to Never mind. But I do like the Mercy Ash combo. If they can boost Headhunter. Maybe they're going to boost Zero, who's been, like you said, one of the bright spots for Colorado Mace. has got some great picks, especially on the Goblin. Meanwhile, Boise State, I would assume D'Angelo wants to fight for that Nano Blade and then let Goblin yep. pop off. So let's real talk about Mercy play for a second. Ideally, both Mercy and Ash, both um, Hanzo and Ash are very pocketable targets. Yeah. Usually you want to go for the Ash thing. Get Bob and do that thing. I think that RJ Beast over there should absolutely pocket the Hanzo on zero because I've not seen anything we're pocketing from him. Boise well, State immediately has health bars for Colorado Mesa at 50%. And RJ Beast needs a headshot from Max, so there is no pocket at all. Zero's the next one to go down. Goblin has a great flank on the Funk Physics. And with Headhunter going down, it's all up to Unknown and Savitra. And this looks like it should be a quick win here on Volskaya for Boise State. The Diva will go down, and Boise State will immediately claim victory here and move to 2 0, up 2 0 in this series. We'll see what map three has in store. Don't forget, Boise State Esports always looking for talented production, broadcast, and players. Good grades can earn you scholarships as well. If you're interested in signing up, check them out, boisestate.edu slash esports for more information. Don't forget, we also got the Boise State Halloween party coming up on October 30th. So if you're in the area from 6 to 10, come on by. Should be a ton of fun. Fun, though, D'Angelo, is probably not the best way to describe what Colorado Mesa is having right now. It feels a lot more like pain and suffering. Pain and suffering, I think, is absolutely accurate, Fish. And I do think that they are giving it a genuine effort. I yeah. really do think that they are trying because there are times when Boise State is like out of position and they get punished for that. Mm -hmm. So I truly do think Colorado Mesa is giving it their best effort. I do not think that they were the... We were led to believe <laughs> by some people that they were above 
4K. Hey, they're still 11 and 0. They, they are absolutely are still 11 and 0, and that is totally amazing for and amazing for them. Probably but one more map. But that is different <laughs> than well, yes. <laughs> but that is different. That is different than a team that is above 4K. And we were prepared for a team above 4K, and I don't necessarily like no BM to them, but that is definitely not what we're seeing. Like I said, they've had some bright spots. They've had some, they've, they've, they've done a great job of punishing Boise State when Boise State has gotten too aggressive, which some teams have struggled to do. So they are as good as you know maybe the 11 and 0 record indicates, but as you said, maybe 100%. a bit overhyped. We will have to see. Well, we will take a short break. We'll be back with map number three. Will Boise State put an end to the 11 and 0 record for Colorado Mesa, or maybe the Mavericks have just been secretly trolling us all along, D'Angelo, and they're going to have an epic reverse sweep. We will all find out after this break. NationalGuard.com to begin your guard adventure. Here are a couple lessons I've learned over the years. Friendships come in all shapes and sizes. And always buckle up. Seatbelts save lives. That's a rule we can all live by. I am Into the Boise State Gay Pants Esports Arena, watching our coverage of play versus Collegiate Overwatch. Boise State and Colorado Mesa heading into game three on Havana, we have been told. Series currently sitting at 2 0 in favor of Boise State. Michael Fish Fisher, Colby D'Angelo Alloway here to call all of the action. And D'Angelo, I think you and I have a very specific request for Boise State on Havana. Please don't attack first. Please don't. It would be absolutely terrible because. Well, if Boise State doesn't completely take them seriously, they might not cap third point. But I think the way things have been going, as affectionately as possible, I think if we attacked first, we would get close to third point, and if not outright cap it on Havana, which is like an insane task. Yeah. And then <laughs> Colorado Mesa might be held first. Unless they're able to really get it together and Boise State falls back into those bad, you know, 1v6 habits that mm -hmm. they've actually been capable of punishing Boise State for. Yeah. The couple of individual times it's popped out, they've punished them for that. Mm -hmm. So it is reasonable to assume that they will continue to do that in the future. They are 11 and 0, and we are seeing that that is a reputation well deserved on their part. Agree. I, I will say the last time I think we saw Havana, the last time on stream we saw Havana, I'm sure they practiced it. Boise State did kind of get punished by St. Clair. They, they couldn't even leave their own spot. So, I believe. 
Yes, that yeah. was incredibly unfortunate. Yeah, Fish. I, was just, Sorry, I, I want to make to, sure like, I was like, I'm pretty sure I got the right map. Yeah. I had to zone off into space yeah, that was and weird. think about it for a second. And then I was like, oh, yes, that is when we played Asu for like the first time that season. And actually, I did end up talking with Asu after that. And his game was in a language that he did True. not understand. We did go over there. But I mean, there, so there are so opportunities to punish Boise State on Havana. Absolutely. Uh, Attacking-wise, at least, if Boise State... I mean, because that was that was you know one of Plato's first games on on the Reinhardt. We were going yep. like Reinhardt, just charging in, no backup. So there are some yep. punish, but I think one Plato's gotten a lot better since then. We'll see what Colorado Mesa could do, but there are some areas to punish. It is Havana here, Boise State take it on Colorado Mesa. Both teams undefeated, as we've alluded to. Colorado Mesa 11 and 0 coming into this. Expected a very strong team. Have seen some small bright spots from them, but we'll see if we can see the total package here on Havana. And again, D'Angelo and I. Just for the sake of our voices are asking, please don't attack first Boise State. Just defend. Maybe get a close hold going for a while there. And, and maybe it's a quick map. Or maybe maybe Colorado Mesa can go all three, D'Angelo. I don't know why you don't believe in them. Maybe they can use Doc's keys to the game. Brought to us by Dropping Gaming, of course, which are never take a fair fight. Take fights at unexpected places when they are unprepared. And tempo, tempo, tempo. Boise State has done all three of those spectacularly so far tonight. We'll see if they can do it one more time here on Havana. But Dropping Gaming is the premier online platform for gamers who seek competition. Play your favorite games, win cash and prizes through free and paid entry matches and tournaments. Whether you're new to the scene or a seasoned veteran, Dropping Gaming is the right games and competition for you. To begin your competitive gaming journey, sign up at dropingaming.com. Calm. It's game number three. It's Escort. It's a Boise State clean sweep on the table, D'Angelo, as we hop into Havana. And for potentially the last time, I will force you to wear what looks to be the pink and whatever of Colorado Mesa. How can the Mavericks make this a map? They can make this a map. First of all, I see probably Funky on Baptiste, and that's definitely not what we're looking for here. Um, because Funky's Baptiste is definitely not uh, something that can go up against Boise State, but I do think that our Ana is. And if they actually are on the Ana. That's fantastic. Good. There he is. Three man anti landed, by the way, by Funky. Absolutely. Physics. And that's. Unfortunately, really uh, did not help the rest of the team. You can't really blame your Anna, though, when they land a huge anti and then you all just get melted. At that point, that's not necessarily your honest fault. We do see Headhunter come out on the Bastion there for some damage that Boise State is not going to expect. That's also what happened when St. Clair did this. They pulled out the Bastion and Boise State wasn't ready. Yeah, Boise State is ready for Headhunter this time as they are going to land a nice two-man stun there. By Goblin, Headhunter is the first one to go down. Zero, of course, to use that cryo freeze. The Boise State tanks are incredibly low. Plato will fall. Kel can be forced out of the mech, but they will lose their Reinhardt as well for Colorado Mesa. It's a trade, and a Deadeye will come out just at the end for fun. And Boise State should be able to get Plato back in time. Nothing's good to stop. It doesn't look like they're going back to taxi him, so if Colorado Mesa is going to do this, they really need to try to it right now before that now with that Matrix. Yeah, Matrix just ripped apart inside of Colorado Mesa. Both supports are down. Plato's got back in the fight before it even started. And Boise State is just absolutely shutting down everything Colorado Mesa wants to do. Here's what you want to do when you're getting close held like this, and it, it seems like there's nothing you can do. Um, you want to come at them with something unexpected. So if Zero is able to land a huge blizzard on the six that would be a big deal. Ooh, it's a great pick. Uh, Maxwell's the one who lands the great blizzard, though. A nice three-man freeze. Immortality feels barely keeping Plato alive. A nice three-man shadow will come up right afterwards. Zero gets the blizzard down, but unfortunately his team wasn't there. And Chosen with a great amp or a great immortality field with Boise State that fight. I will say Colorado Mesa blew their first dance that they had there because they used all of their ultimates when they were already down and not necessarily going to win the fight. Bomb comes out from Kel. He'll pick up a double. Zero goes down as well to Plato. And the Boise State tanks are absolutely dominating right now. And you look at Colorado Mesa side, they basically got a Hail Mary Diva Bomb, and that's it. That's what they can do with it is Maywall goes down. Headhunter's gonna get caught on the wrong side. So is Unknown. There's that Diva Bomb. Levitra does manage to take down Goblin. 
Colorado Mesa still down two. Now finally they respawn and they are right on top of their spawn, but they lose RJ Beast as soon as that happens. Zero can't make a play either, and Boise State continues just a suffering chokehold. So what they could do is try to use the beat offensively here or pop out with an unexpected widow and snipe that Baptiste that's completely undercover. It's completely outside of the cover there. There are a couple of things that Colorado Mason could do to make this. Well, they at least got the, uh, they attempted a nice sound barrier there, but it immediately ate a shatter and Boise State, they handle the one health mech, unfortunately, as well. Uh, they, they're, I don't even know what to say. Boise State has never looked good on this good on a close hold yet. I would agree with that, Fish. Boise State is doing a completely punishing, dominating, seems impossible, go hold grip to get out of. I do think that that odds this is in the pickle, because that's something unexpected that can one shot somebody. And that's all Colorado Mason needs, is maybe two unexpected limbs. Unfortunately, the two limbs are against them. Plato shattering into the spawn. Time will expire with just three point five meters from Colorado Mesa. This will be very tough, if not impossible, to defend. Usually the way you see these sorts of games go in not not just in competitive, but also if you're like an Overwatch player and you just play games like this casually by yourself. Usually what happens in games like this is the team that was able to hold you in your spawn the whole game is able to immediately break your hold. And I hate to say it, but I think Colorado Mesa is going to fall into that same pattern that many other teams have fallen into before. We will see what they can do. We will see. I think right now Colorado Mesa is sitting on maybe two eliminations on this map. Maybe they can add to that total with a close hold. The other hard part is you might not be a team that practices a close hold, D'Angelo, but this sick circumstance requires you to play a close hold if you're Colorado yep. Mesa. And there were a couple of things Colorado Mesa could have done to get out of that close hold, because when you're in a close hold like that, even if it feels completely impossible to break out of without getting eliminated, don't go into it with the mindset if you have to survive whatever you're gonna do, because you don't, especially since the spawn is right there in a close hold. If you can immediately switch to Rogue Hog, pop out, get a single elimination, and then insta-die after that, that was one too. Or if you can pop out with a Widowmaker and get a headshot onto the Baptiste that wasn't playing cover, and then you immediately die for that, that also would have been worth it. Colorado Mesa wasn't doing that. They were trying to pick like actual team fights. Oh! Speaking of picks, Boise State has already picked up three eliminations. On to Colorado Mesa. They will push the payload all 3.6 meters, and just like that, Boise State will pick up the victory. They will ruin Colorado Mesa's undefeated season, and the Broncos will remain undefeated with a 3-0 in dominating fashion, no less D'Angelo. And what we saw Plato do right there was a good example of what exactly I was saying that Colorado Mesa should have done. Come out with the hog, eliminate somebody like immediately because they're not expecting you to, like why would they expect Plato to play hog? He hasn't the rest of the night, but he did and got the instant elimination on the mercy, which is one of the most important people you can eliminate. Don't forget that the Idaho Army National Guard is a proud supporter of Boise State Esports. The top plays that you see at the end of every night are brought to you by the Idaho Army National Guard with 10 jobs, offering a $20,000 bonus and review of choice paid for. The Idaho Army National Guard, one of the best teams out there. Reach out on Twitch at iGuardGaming. Well, that was a fast series for Boise State, and this number, given to me by production, D'Angelo, is something I never would have thought I would have seen. Boise State won all three maps in a combined time of 19 minutes. I can 100% believe that after watching those <laughs> maps just then. That's I insanely unheard of, though. Like, usually, like, you get a decent challenge, you know. I've heard times where people are like, oh, it's a quick 3-0. It's like 30 minutes. I'm like, eh, it's like 45. Like, let's be honest. Like, there's the, the push time. There's the contested time. No, 19 minutes, 24 seconds for Boise State. Well, we came <laughs> at them expecting – so – we came at them expecting them to be not just 11 and 0, which they 100% lived up to. Yeah. But we expected them to be on the same playing level yeah. as Boise State, which they were not. 
So we came at them 100% seriously, doing all of the things that I've been harping on all season, like not taking the 1v6, not doing this, mm -hmm. that, and the other thing. Not. We came out doing all of those things. We came out really ready for a 4K team. Yeah. Which they were not. I, I will say I do think that it's nice to show that Boise State can flip that switch and can say, hey, there's a team that we expect to be good. We can play to what we believe to be their potential and not just kind of, you know, cruise through the season and let those mistakes come back and bite them. So that is something good to see. Well, as we prepare to put a bow on this, D'Angelo, your ICC player of the game nomination, I mean, I think there's a lot of great choices. I have one in mind, but I'd love to see what you have to say. We definitely rolled them. Yes. So you could definitely make an argument for everybody on Boise State because everybody had a highlight or a team kill at some point, especially after Havana. But I think Goblin had the first team kill. Yeah. And I think he continued to do that. So I think Goblin will continue to have a monopoly on the ICCU player of the game because that's just how Goblin plays. And Back to the switch you were talking about, Fish. I'm not sure if it irritates me more <laughs> that we're capable of playing like this. We just don't all the time. It's the coach's worst nightmare of like, come on, I know you can play better than this. I agree with you. It's, it can be frustrating. I will say, I really want it to be a large bagel because he had so many boops off the oh, edge. Oh, his it, boops were insane. Yes, it is. There it is, Fish. That's there it wonderful. Is. This is just a great, this is the moment where you're like, okay, yep. I'm not going to lie. I saw him get through the window and turn that, and like get around that middle part. And I knew that there was going to be a massive boot there. And the fact that he managed to get the Baptiste and the enemy Lucio in that boop off the map is a fight winner and the ultimate dishonor for Colorado Mesa's RJ over there. I'm going to say, I don't know what our, what our other highlight will be, but we didn't even get the best one. I mean, not that that's easy, but you can kind of predict off the spawn. You can do the rollout. This is the one to pull up a double boop flank is absolutely wild. He gets right in their face, knocks one off the edge. He's going to roll right back in and get another one. A huge congratulations to a large bagel. They are the ICCU player of the game. Brought to you by Idaho Central Credit Union. This great player makes the team more successful. It's like Idaho Central's helping members achieve financial success. A large bagel is your ICCU player of the game. Finally, the supports pick one up. 100%. I know, know D'Angelo is excited that as a support main. That was amazing. Her, her fellow supports get picked up there. Well, your final thoughts as we prepare to close this one out. I mean, again, we talked about the the, the the switch that Boise State could flip. We talked about them playing at their best. Any more you want to add to ending Colorado Mesa's undefeated season? I guess I feel better knowing <laughs> that even if we are losing, we're capable of flipping a switch, yes. a, like a win switch, if you will. Yep. Because Boise State played phenomenally tonight, especially on that first Lijiang map. We were 100% ready for everything. Everybody was in sync. There was no 1v6ing. There was no individual over the team. It was a team game. We were all going together. We all knew what we had to do. So I guess it's nice <laughs> that it we have the ability to do that if there ever is a team that challenges and completely punishes our occasional 1v6. True style, mm -hmm. but it was also just really nice to see the Boise State A team yeah. that we don't get to see a lot. Like, we got to see Chosen mm -hmm. on the support, but we also got to see Maxel in. And Maxel is somebody that we play occasionally mm -hmm. because we want to get other players' playtime, which is totally valid. Yep. But when we see Maxel, we are immediately reminded <laughs> of why he is the A team, because everything he does is he is on he is completely on Goblin's level in yep. all things in terms of DPS. And it's just lovely to see not only one DPS that can wreck the entire enemy team, but two. Say so the Goblin Maxwell combo is not something we've seen a whole lot of, so it was yep. very exciting to see, as you mentioned. Well, we will wrap this up with our top five plays presented by the Idaho Army National Guard, who invites you to take your impressive critical thinking skills into real time. More than 10 jobs offering a $20,000 bonus and degree of choice paid for the Idaho Army National Guard. One of the best teams out there. Reach out on Twitch at IAGuard Gaming. But we are not done yet. About 40 minutes from now, Boise State will trudge back down to the state of Colorado. It will be Boise State versus Colorado College in NACE. Take a 40-minute break. Enjoy these top five plays. But we'll be back at 8 o'clock with some more Overwatch action.
gonna take the long way around. They have the sound barrier, they have the blizzard, and a photon barrier will start things off, cut off that amp matrix. It's a triple kill, Diva Bob for Kel. The Boise State is in complete command. They will even force Colorado Mesa to knock it on the points. They might have actually had a perfect map this time. The turrets, they have to turn around, they turn their back to Boise State, and immediately Unknown goes down. Zero, the next one looks like he's gonna have to fall. Immortality Field is gonna be forced to come out there from Boise State. So far, Boise State has not lost a single member, and those symmetric turrets set up a great start. That was a nice little sleep on the Goblin side, like they were. I am genuinely shocked. The bagel was able to catch some of them out. This is supposed to be a higher level team. It's not very higher level to come through indoors and still manage to get boots off the map. How? I'm not even gonna ask how you die to a dead eye as Reinhardt. That just seems power. What does Colorado Mason need to do quickly, D'Angelo, in this first fight to be able to challenge Boise State? Well, Headhunter needs to recognize that he's not gonna be able to 1v1. Oh, no. Ooh, not that. Oh no. What a great read by a large bagel. He predicts the symmetric teleporter. Gets a double loop on both supports. And there's no alt even close for Colorado Mesa Goblin. Gonna look to hop right in there. Has the meteor strike. Gonna be immediately popped at. Look at they drop right on top of Colorado Mesa. It's a triple kill for Goblin. The Gravitic Flux picks up two more. And Boise State gets a team kill.
looking for answers, but I'm blinded by the lights. I'm lost in the music, and I stay here for the night. I promise I'll be gone in the morning, out of sight and out of
welcome into the Boise State Game Pants Esports Arena. You're watching our coverage of NACE Collegiate Overwatch. Boise State looking to remain undefeated in NACE, moving to 7-0 and tonight as they will take on Colorado College. My name is Michael Fish Fisher. Joining me to call all of the action is Colby D'Angelo out of the way. And D'Angelo, we just saw Boise State take on a team where we had heard, you know, some rumors had definitely prepared for a team that we expected to be an even matchup. Going into a game against Colorado College, who has some good wins on the resume, including wins over Bushnell and others. How do you want to see Boise State react when they are expected to be the better team coming into this match? I would like them to. S I would like to see them react with respect, because just because you are the favorite team does not mean that everybody on your team control mm -hmm. from first map to last map that that's not what that's supposed to mean that's not this whole sportsmanship thing like just because you're a good team does not mean you have the right to like go out of your way to make a fool of the enemy team that said i do expect we will see a little bit more of goblin 1v6ing <laughs> not because he's trying to be disrespectful but because if he knows he can if he if he thinks even mm -hmm. that he can get away with a 1v6 play like that, I mean, it it makes him excited. It yep. makes the casters excited. Yeah, oh it yeah. makes his team excited. It, like, why wouldn't you go for it if you even have the slightest inkling that you could? And so I think we will see a little bit more of that if Goblin is one of the people that we end up playing. I do also expect to see some subs on the mm -hmm. sides of Boise State. Um, I fully expect probably Nerdy Bird and Frost to come in and get played likely for Chosen and Maxel. I don't imagine that we would sub out Goblin, mm -hmm. even if he's not necessarily, like, needed. <laughs> he's always needed. He's we always, always need a highlight. I was about to say, he's always entertaining yes. and serves a lot more purpose other than just being a really good DPS. Though I do think Maxel could serve the same purpose because they are on equal skill levels yeah. as DPS and they are both interesting players to watch because oh, yeah. of that. So I do actually think that Maxwell could fill a similar position if we gave him the amount of playtime that we give Goblin. But, I mean, Maxwell makes the right plays, not the fun plays. That's the problem. We want to see the he Goblin one. Plays. We want to see the Goblin 1v6 Torp. That's Maxwell true. just is like, I'll just slowly kill you and be in the right spot. I'll just headshot the entire exactly. team. I'll just headshot it. the whole team, but I'm, I'm in the right it. position. But I'll just well, play I, Hanzo. I agree with you. I, I fully expect to see people like Nerdy Bird, probably Frost, to both be in there as yep. well from the start. Would expect Boise State, at least in game one, to stay on their main roles. After that, maybe we might get some experimentation across the board as well. We will have to see. But while we wait to hop into this one, let's take a look at the event card tonight because we do have some changes, at least in the map order. Every single tournament likes to be unique, so we will go to more of I would call D'Angelo maybe the standard map order, which will be Control, Hybrid, Escort, Ben Assault fourth, if we see it, and then back to Control. As, as always, Boise State will pick the first map as the higher seeded team. We expect to see Li Zhang. After that, the loser will pick. But we do get our standard Li Zhang, then probably Kings Row, and then take your pick in Escort format that we were used to seeing. And being used to seeing something just, I mean, you get used to it. King's yeah. Row is something that you do not like a lot because you've seen so much of King's Row. Mm -hmm. And I do agree with that from a caster standpoint. It can get kind of annoying to like cast the same map over and over and over again. But I mean, you also get good at casting the same map over and over and over again. So it's likely that most casters would be better at King's Row True. than other ones. True. Unless you're at Boise State, because we don't pick King's Row ever. That's very <laughs> true. Boise State likes to be unexpected and quirky, and it totally works for them because, I mean, we're one of the top-seeded teams, so clearly we must be doing something right, and maybe one of those things is our map choice, Fish. Well, speaking of unexpected, let's take a look at Doc's keys of the game because they're usually talking about making the unexpected, and that is to never take a fair fight. What does that mean? Take fights in unexpected places when the other team is unprepared and tempo, tempo, tempo. It's all brought to us by Drop In Gaming. Drop In Gaming, the premier online platform for gamers who seek competition. Play your favorite games, win cash and prizes through free and paid entry matches and tournaments. Whether you're new to the scene or a seasoned veteran, Drop In Gaming has the right games and competition for you. Begin your competitive gaming journey. Sign up at dropingaming.com. Getting ready to go here. NACE Week 7, Boise State taking on Colorado College. The Broncos are 6 and 0. Oh, Colorado College sitting at 2 and 4, but do have some wins over teams like Bushnell, who is highly thought of, and, and some other very talented teams. So Boise State cannot be too cocky, D'Angelo, in these map choices, in their hero choices. I'm be very curious to see if it is Li Zhang or maybe Boise uses time to practice something like New Bonnie because they have been a little bit more uh, 
up in the air on what they pick for control. I was told the start of the year it's always it's always Li Zhang. It's always Li Zhang. It's always Li Zhang. We've seen some Oasis. We've seen some Nubani. Not Nubani. Nepal. That's the word I'm thinking of. <laughs> Nepal. I was like, Nubani's not the right. Yeah. So I'm very curious if we do actually see Li Zhang, which we just saw just a few hours, about an hour ago, Boise State's absolute domination on that map when they actually choose it. And I do expect Boise State to completely dominate on Li Zhang if that is what we decide to choose. Mm -hmm. Because we choose it for a reason. We choose it because we're good at it and because we're practiced on it. That's the whole reason we pick Li Zhang. So it's 100% expected for us to dominate on that map. Other maps we don't really do a ton of are, like you said, Nepal. Yeah. Have we seen Nepal? Have mm. we scrimmed Nepal? I think Who knows? Nepal. I think we played Nepal once. So once. that is definitely a map where Boise State would be expected to be weaker. Mm-hmm. Though I will say, I mean... Not necessarily weak enough to lose, but... True. Be, but different team, different, you know, f expectations... Back in the spring in the Mount West Championship game when it went to a game five, Boise State did pick Nepal. So they have some history of winning big maps on that, or big games on that map. But again, they're right. I think Nepal, maybe Oasis. We actually have not seen a lot of Oasis, I don't think. Maybe once. So maybe, maybe this is a time to maybe experiment with different lineups, different maps that we'll have to see. Speaking of the lineups, let's take a look at our count lineups for the night. Count on Identity Trust Global Network delivers real-time fraud prevention, account protection, and enables a personalized customer experience for more than 9,000 leading brands. We see there that would be the starting Boise State lineup. Again, we, we would expect maybe potentially Nerdy to fill in for the chosen slot there, potentially Frost to fill in for Maxwell. We are not quite sure. We have not got official confirmation, but we will expect to see some combination of those players. And really, after their last game against Colorado Mesa, all of these players are functioning on a very high level. I'll be curious to see how Frost and Nerdy do once they get subbed in because – are they cold? Have they been warming up in the downtime? Very curious because Plato, Kel, Goblin, and a large bagel absolutely all popped off. I 100% believe that they've been warming up, especially during that break. So I fully expect the entire Boise State team to come out as the best that they possibly can. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually excited to see more Frost play because he's not somebody that we see as often as yeah, – I, I, I love seeing more of both – him and Maxwell as they like swap back and forth because they're both very different players with very different play styles used in very different situations. Mm -hmm. So I like to see both of them. And I think it's especially nice to give the players that you have playtime if you have the ability to do so. I think Frost is one of those players who probably has a calendar on his wall or on his desktop that is counting down the days to Overwatch 2, by the way, because of the fact that he plays so much Sombra. And Sombra looks to get a very big buff in Overwatch Stupid. 2. So yeah. 40% damage is kind of crazy. So I feel like Frost has like that countdown on his computer somewhere in his house. It's like days till Overwatch 2 and Sombra becomes absolutely insanely meta. And I will carry Boise State to the problem. I don't know about that last part, but. And then he's got like a little stamp with Sombra's face on yeah, it. Yeah, he just stamps day, like, every single like day. Like that, that little hack icon. So yes. like right now. Mm -hmm. It's like an advent calendar. He like stamps it every day. He eats a piece of chocolate that has like, you know. It looks like Sombra's face, maybe. It maybe looks like that. that little skull, the hack skull Yeah, that exactly. She has. It has, like, a little chocolate for every single day. Hopefully, here's fake Overwatch 2 comes soon, because those chocolates might get very, very stale. But we are just, once again, waiting to hop in. Should be Li Zhang Tower, we are told. And, you know, I don't want to do this to because I know you're a very big Boise State fan, but I'm going to make you put on the Colorado College uniform for a little bit. What can Colorado College do, especially if it is Li Zhang, to make Boise State struggle in this first map from what you've seen for the Broncos so far this semester? What can Colorado College maybe do to catch Boise State off guard and maybe steal a map and maybe win a game against Boise State? First of all, you're going to want to focus the Symmetra, which is probably going to be Frost. Mm -hmm. You're probably, And that's convenient for them, too, because um, of the two, of Goblin and Frost, Frost would be the easier one to single out. True. Which is no BM to him. Goblin is just you never expect that good. You, you know where you never know where Goblin's gonna be. Yeah, you problem. never know where. Uh, and Goblin has his own things that you can sing single out and take advantage of. And I would also tell them to do that because I think the key to their victory would be singling out Frost, probably on the Symmetra, and also singling out Goblin when he goes for those flanks. And he might be running a far up. We've seen a couple True. of different Faras, and he doesn't exactly play conservatively on that Fara. And mm -hmm. that's also going to be really unfortunate for Nerdy Bird, who will likely be pocketing them. Mm -hmm. Because in a lot of cases, if your Fara isn't playing conservatively, I mean, like, her beam is only so long. You kind of have to follow after. Yeah. And Li Zhang is definitely one of those maps where you can get a lot of cover. So I'm not necessarily saying that they can or should take advantage of 
the likely Nerdy Bird Mercy in that situation, but you can definitely easily sing. Well, not easily, mm -hmm. but you could easily compared to trying to like single out Kel, single out the Boise State DPS and do something about that. Well, it is Li Zhang Tower. So we were right on that one. It's Boise State and Colorado College here. First game of the night in Nace, best of five. We'll see how many we get. And we'll see what the comp Boise State wants to come out with. This map in particular really, I think, favors that far that you maybe mentioned for Goblin. Absolutely. Would love to just fly right in their spawn. Of course, he's been playing a lot of Doomfist, playing that very aggressively. Maybe if you can pull out a Sombra or a McCree, stun that Doomfist on the enemy side. Maybe that'll happen. We will see when things kick off. What exactly the team comp is going to be there for Boise State and Colorado Colleges. It does look to be like there's a Doomfist with a blue silhouette, and I would assume the name G-O-B will be right next to it. And Doomfist is one of those heroes where a couple of people have to hit their abilities on him. So like, if you hit him honestly, you can insta-murder him. But if you just hit him a free flash, a lot of McCrees have the problem where they can't actually kill the Doomfist because he gets so many shields. We do get a nice surprise. Well, not going to be a large bagel there. He'd be Asu and Nerdy in on that support support role for game number one. And right now, no one's really taking any damage. Goblin does have that Orb of Discord on him. Jury now getting a little bit of spam down. So is Boppinson. But right now, Colorado College is staying off the point, staying away from Boise State. As Kel will finally pick up the first elimination onto Jury. We see Bopperson and Spark also taking a ton of damage. Boise State basically uncontested on top of the point. They'll pick up two more eliminations. Uh oh, Plato. Luckily, he runs into a rock there and swings the hammer. And Boise State starts it off with a nice clean win. And Asu is actually somebody that we haven't seen a lot, so I'm also really excited and completely surprised to see Asu in today on one of his favorite heroes, Baptiste. He did an amazing job at charging Amplification Matrix throughout that first fight, when, like you said, Boise State wasn't taking a lot of damage, which means he had to do a lot of damage. to charge that ultimate. Ultimate, the Amp Matrix will immediately go down, but a nice Pulse Bomb will take out the Immortality Field from Inferno. Huge cooldown wasted for Boise State. We'll see what Colorado College can do with it. They'll turn that into a pick on to Plato. And Boise State, not quite the teleport I think they were looking for there. They're gonna lose Nerdy as well, and that'll put them now down two. Frost barely hanging on for dear life. Goblin will be the next one to fall. This looks like Colorado College is gonna pick up this fight. Boise State probably just trying to stall out as long as possible. Kel will walk right back on the point, trying to build as much percent, but gets hacked. No use of that Diva Bomb. And that will be a reset for Boise State. I don't think Kel wanted to use the Diva Bomb in that fight in the first place. I think he plans to do something else with it because Kel definitely had the opportunity to do so. I think Colorado College actually has a couple things that they can capitalize on now that I've seen a couple of fights. I think Frost is one of them that they can capitalize on um, just because of that little like missed teleporter that likely came from not necessarily being in um, official games before this, like the rest of the cast. Um, we also see a lot of like ground Lucio and Nerdy Bird. Shatter there for Plato. They get the one man EMP for Boffinson. Probably not what you're looking for. And unfortunately, I think Colorado College just got a bit too aggressive and they weren't able to take advantage of those weak spots that you mentioned. Is Goblin now on the Sombra trying to hold on? Gets a nice hack there on the jury, and Boise State will just reset the point after 40%. And we hear a little bit of voice line spamming there from Goblin after that nice hack onto the ball. The who wears the fun and playing fair because that is Sombra's whole thing is that she does not in fact, in fact play fair. And you know, it's got to feel extra not fair when you're running a ball into a Sombra's pool. Oh, might want to switch that. I think once the boot wasn't quite able to find it. Pulse Bomb from Inferno picks up a double oh. kill. Ernie will drop the sound barrier as a rally comes out from Chrome Z. Unfortunately for Boise State, they're able to get one there with the Symmetra turret on the Spark. Goblin has the EMP and the Plato Goblin combo still doing quite a bit of damage. Point has flipped over in Colorado College's favor, and I think that forces a reset from the Broncos. That was not a winnable fight. We should not have sound barrier that, especially after losing our main healer in ASU. That was a wasted sound barrier, and that's really unfortunate because now they have mines up and that would be the big thing that sound barrier to be used for. And it's also likely that Bopleston will charge another EMP before Dirty can charge another sound barrier. There is the minefield that immediately comes down. Goblin is going to get hacked and cannot get away. Photon barrier from Frost does come down. Boise State needs an elimination. They have a couple members very low. Immortality field 
from Asu will be used and immediately burned down as a transcendence of Eevee. He's going to keep all of Colorado College nice and healthy. Boise State dropping that Ant Matrix, but they're not finding any eliminations. Finally, they'll trade one for one, but now they will immediately lose two more. And it's the Boise State Broncos who are in last by territory. I gotta say, Colorado College is doing a pretty good job of taking advantage of Boise State's individual mistakes that are being made with relative frequency. Especially with Plato, Kel, Goblin, and um, especially those four, or those three that were playing in the other, like, it's like watching a completely different team with those three. They're playing completely differently. They are not at the top of their game in any sense of the word. Colorado College wow. is a sneaky <laughs> win. I mean, it, it wasn't quite a C9, but Boise State didn't even get back to contest for overtime either. And I think you're right. I mean, the Boise State there just was, it, it felt like, as you said, they weren't playing up to what we saw in the first series against Colorado Mesa. And I just think they didn't really ever have like a structured team comp. It was just kind of like Goblin trying to 1v6 at times, it felt like. It's I do not think that Goblin trying to 1v6 at times was actually the primary problem that Boise State was having for once. Well, this is not the map I'd expect to see a pharmacy on if you're Colorado College. Probably the only map with a roof is not the way to go, but we'll see what Bop and Sid and Crumsy can get done on that pharmacy. Well, our Colorado College is changing a lot of things. Boise State really not making too many changes by foot and tell on to a different tank as Bobbinson picks up one. Evie gets a great double kill there. Kel trying to make something happen, but Boise State just simply running out of health, and it's almost a team kill for Colorado College. I'm genuinely shocked at the level of Baptiste play we are seeing from Asu, who is normally such a confident, amazing Baptiste player. His lamps have been suboptimal at best, Fish, in the kindest way possible. We've seen a lot of ability misuse from the half of the team that just came in, and hopefully as maps progress, they can get past that. We talked about uh, that, just how fresh would they be? How much prep have they done as the Rock Garage from Bobbinson does come out, not able to find a single elimination, but Inferno on the Doofus takes down Frost, then takes down Nerdy. Boise State already down two, probably has to opt for a reset here. Inferno doing his best goblin impression. Gets a three kill on the Doofus. Boise State just has to look for a retreat as the Meteor Strike does come out from Inferno. I don't think he'll be able to find another kill. He will not. He is incredibly low, but Boise State gonna be forced to reset. It's also really unfortunate because we're always on the player's POV when they make a huge mistake like that. Yeah, we have uh, not been kind to them. And speaking of being kind, how about an immediate four piece from Colorado College? Bob, it's proven me wrong. Boise State can't get anything going. It's really unfortunate because we were on Asus' perspective when he missed the sound, uh, missed the amplification matrix trying to save the doom, which is totally understandable. But then they're on a land and a huge anti. He didn't have his his immortality field up. And then we were also on Nerdy's perspective when they yeeted themselves into the enemy team and then block on that rocket barrage, but unfortunately that's not all Boise State's gonna have that's going well for them. They immediately lose Frost, Kel, Aisu, Plato, and Nerdy Goblin can't even survive long enough. Boise State's gonna have one last chance for like a staggered fight if they get to the point. As affectionately wow. as possible, Colorado College is doing to Boise State what Boise State just did to Colorado Mesa. But here's here's the very primary difference, and it kind of I bet this was the anti for which we didn't have the. What was? This is the anti where we didn't have field, and so everybody died. That was a great. We have seen some great auto play tonight from the other team. Colorado I mean, apparently just known for their auto play. Colorado Mesa and Colorado College. Don't forget Boise State esports. Always looking for talented players, production, and broadcast talent. Top talent along with good grades, eligibility, can earn you scholarships as well. Sign up to me by visiting boisestate.edu slash esports for more info. I mean, D'Angelo, I'll give you the floor to try and figure out what exactly just went wrong in game number one. That wasn't even close. It wasn't even close at all, which is especially unfortunate considering we just rolled the other Colorado team. But we did switch half of our team, and the half that we switched in, especially on the supports, is definitely lackluster. We saw Frost 
messed up a teleporter. Like, okay, big deal. You messed up one ability. But we've seen repeated ability misuse and just general misplay mm -hmm. from both Nerdy Bird and Asu. And it's definitely not what we're looking for. Yeah. And it's a little bit sad because I was especially excited to see Asu because Baptiste is a hero that Asu is normally incredibly skilled at. Mm -hmm. Asu went from low masters to GM to essentially like where he is now in a season on Baptiste because he learned to play Baptiste so well and Baptiste is a hero that you can use in all situations. But we have not been seeing peak Asu Baptiste tonight at all to yep. put it lightly and the swap from a large bagel getting player of the game for his exceptional lucio play mm -hmm. to the current well we will have to go to break see what boise state could do to figure things out because you're right it was definitely a lackluster performance i think the first nace map boise state has dropped but we'll take a break we'll be back with map two it's boise state and colorado college after this NationalGuard.com to begin your guard adventure. Here are a couple lessons I've learned over the years. Friendships come in all shapes and sizes. And always buckle up. Seatbelts save lives. That's a rule we can all live by. into the Boise State Gay Pants Esports Arena watching our coverage of NACE Collegiate Overwatch. We just saw Colorado College get maybe a little bit of a surprising win on map number one. Boise State now gets the choice for hybrid. We've been told they're hovering Kings Road, D'Angelo. We'll see as it looks like we are about to hop into the game, and it looks like it is going to be Kings Row, which is not surprising in the sense of the fact that it's Boise State that's picking Kings Row, and we usually like to talk about how Boise State practices other hybrid maps to catch teams huh. off guard. We're just going to the standard because I guess of how crazy one-sided game one was. And, you know, surprising is definitely a good word for everything that's been going on yeah. so far. That first map, that is definitely not peak Boise State play, no. especially from... I almost think it would... I think the easiest course of action would be to, as excited as I am, to see Asu play because he so rarely gets to play. I think we need some pretty definite subs in our support lineup, or they really need to get it together if we want to not <laughs> repeat the first map for Colorado College. I do think I heard production say it does sound like at least Chosen was in, so I do think Boise State has potentially made some swaps. Don't ask me. 
Chosen and Bagler. So it is both Boise State. You mentioned the Boise State support line in that first game felt to be the weakest. They have gone back Great. to the top squad. At least in the support line, we'll see and if Maxel's in in the DPS role. Frost had one or two major missteps, but the thing about being DPS is you're allowed to make those mistakes. True. Whereas you can't make them as bad. Interesting to note is that it will be chosen at Bagel. Frost will stay in. That Colorado College actually opted to attack. Usually the losing team will pick the map. The other team will then pick if they want to attack or defend first. So interesting that Colorado College did opt to stay remain on the offensive. Because they do have this pharmacy that immediately got picked out of the air. Goblin looking for a nice little flank there. Has a couple of Torbjorn turrets. Has to be careful though. Take quite a bit of damage from Spark. Oh, there it. goes Bobbinson. There goes Spark. Chromzy now with nowhere to go. Trying to pocket Dreary on that Winston who's taking a ton of damage. They do have to use the healing grenade all defensively from Eevee and it's just gonna be a reset. There, Colorado College was not complete, was not ready. We are a completely different team. <laughs> Again, that's why I'm surprised they picked to attack first. This Chosen now on the Baptiste makes his name known with a nice double kill on the Boffinson and Eevee. Drury now taking a ton of damage as well. And once again, it looks like it's another reset here for Colorado College. They weren't ready. I'm confident that that's why they chose to attack. They were expecting Boise State to be the same team that they just played, and we are in fact not. You finally get the high ground here for Colorado College, but it's going to come out of the cost of their main tank on that Winston. Boise State health bar is nice and stable, honestly. Spark goes down, no tanks on the side of Colorado College. Oh, what can em. they do? Ant Matrix goes down. And it's another reset for Colorado College. It is a completely different Boise State team you called at the end. And all the change was the support. And you mentioned it though, you, you know, you said that was the main difference in Boise State on map one, by the way, first ever nice map the Broncos have lost this season. They immediately bring back in Chosen and Bagel and look what happens. Colorado College, two minutes gone by, hasn't even got on the point yet. Chosen and Bagel are doing a fantastic job in their specific roles, specifically Chosen on the Baptiste. Chosen's Baptiste has been everywhere and exactly where it's needed. And he hasn't needed to use an immortality field yet, so I guess that'll be the real test, but. Boise State loses their first member, so we know they aren't immortal as Kel does go down. A Molten Core from Goblin did come out. We have the Valkyrie from Prozzi, a nice solo shatter on the Spark at least, but Prozzi's able to get a nice revive on the Boppinson. And a nice hack onto a large bag will deny the sound barrier. So Boppinson able to get an elimination onto Plato, and Colorado College will start to force Boise State back. Frost gonna use a blizzard on Jury solo over there in that side room in the hotel. And now that Boise State back to full strength, Colorado College got a couple of nice picks, some decent movement on the point, but now they're forced back once again. I'm definitely not excited about the way the ultimates are being used on the side of Boise State there, but that's neither here nor there, I guess, because they didn't, Colorado College, for all that, didn't even get a tick. Yeah, there was some interesting all usage. That was kind of a couple solo alts. Boise State should have a couple more, one more Molten Core, still have the sound barrier up. But of course, I'm sure holding that for Inferno's EMP, that will most likely come up one chance here for Colorado College to unlock the payload and keep pushing. Molten Core is going to start this fight with 34 seconds on the clock. Boppinson taking incredibly low. It will be healed back up to full. They're going to burn down the Mercy right out of the sky to make it three go down for Colorado College. If they reset now, they can force one more fight. They can force one more fight with Grab, and that's their the most important ability that they have. EMD is really, really big, but Grab is how they're going to get the eliminations that they need. A lot of pressure on, especially since we just used the sound barrier. I think we're trying to prevent them from even using Grab in the first place. There's a Grab and a five-man EMP. They do come out. Colorado College, though, does only get only gets one elimination, now make it two. Boise State will be able to take down Spark. They're looking for a pick on the Chromesy, who has popped that Valkyrie, trying to deny the res. Haven't quite given up a tick yet. Kel's trying to hold it down all by himself. He is hacked. It looks like Boise State has been able to hold on. There's the Diva Bomb that will come out. Not able to find anything. A Molten Core from Goblin also will land. Boise State just trying to eliminate Crosby, who flies away from the point, not realizing they were the last member there. And Boise State will hold on by the skin of their teeth to be able to not allow a pip. Boise State looks to 
turn things around here in quite a hurry, D'Angelo. And quite a hurry, Kel trying to hold the point. No, I think the words you were looking for was Kel succeeded. Yeah, that's true. In so in run in solo holding the point, the rest of the members of his team were like around the the, the point, mm -hmm. surviving as they you know like did things. But really, it was Kel that was on there because I mean that's his job as Diva, yeah. right? Because that was some exceptional Ready. Diva gameplay, in my humble opinion, and. I, th Kel I think Kel did an amazing job of preventing them from even getting a single tick. Everything is completely turned around for the first map for Boys State here, and I think that's exactly what we were looking for. We will see if Boise State can make quick work of Colorado College and even this series. We will get our first ever game four in Nate. That is something exciting, at least. We will get to see Assault. I know D'Angelo's pumped. Her favorite map choice, she's told me. Oh, yes, 100%. I have course. told you kidding. those words exactly. I love to play on Assault. Who does it, honestly? Fish? So fun. It's going out of style. I can't wait to see it as much as possible before it gets removed. But we will talk about that at another time as Boise State will kick this one off. We'll see if they're able to make quick work of the Tigers of Colorado College. Goblin just spamming down right now. Colorado College really not changing their comp up too much. It's only Inferno on the Tracer. That is different. And Frost will see if he can cool down that Tracer gameplay. As Boise State will just immediately hop on the point. Now finally does get contested. But Drury's already taken out. Down one tank. Almost down another. As Boffinson will and Spark will fall. Boise State will make quick work of this map. And they will tie the series just like that. Kel has been a menace on that diva to anybody that is in the air, which I mean, like, is the job of a diva player, and that is the job that Kel is doing incredibly well. Because we walked in with Torbjorn and May against the Four Mercy on attack, which is occasionally hard to get the pharaoh out of the sky. But because of Kel and Chosen, there was a fantastic that Fara was not allowed to exist on that first fight where we took the tick. I'm a big fan of the fact that the map was so one-sided. The play of the game was a headshot off spawn from Goblin on the Torbjorn. Well, don't forget the Idaho Army National Guard, a proud supporter of Boise State Esports, top place at the end of every broadcast, presented by the Idaho Army National Guard, invites you to take your impressive critical thinking skills into real time. More than 10 jobs offering a $20,000 bonus and your degree of choice paid for. Idaho Army National Guard is the best team out there. Reach out on Twitch at iGuard Gaming. Well, Boise State has evened the series D'Angelo quickly before we go to break. What do you think Boise State needs to do, if anything, to keep this momentum going? Because they made one small change, and that looks like that was all they really needed to do. I think I think you hit the nail on the head, Fish. That was all we really needed to do. I think Boise State is definitely not necessarily in, like, top form because we're not getting the exceptional team play that mm -hmm. we were getting with the first several maps yeah. against Colorado Mesa. We aren't getting that level of team play, but we are getting – I do think we have enough. I think Kings Row showed us that we have more than enough to win this when at first it didn't look like we had it in us. Colorado College proving a little bit maybe tougher opponent than was expected, but we will take a quick break. We'll be back with map number three between Boise State and Colorado College. Where will we go for escort? It'll be Colorado College's choice, and it's all coming up right after this. NationalGuard.com to begin your guard adventure.
Here are a couple lessons I've learned over the years. Friendships come in all shapes and sizes. And always buckle up. Seatbelts save lives. That's a rule we can all live by. Welcome back into the Boise State Game Pants Esports Arena, watching our coverage of NACE Collegiate Overwatch, Boise State and Colorado College, heading into Game 3 on Escort. Series sitting at 1-1. One to one. Fish and D'Angelo calling all of the action, and it seemed like Boise State fixed a lot of their woes, D'Angelo, on hybrid with a bit of a substitution in terms of the players. Do you think Colorado College has the horses to match Boise State's lineup if they stick with it? Or do you think Boise State might get back to what we expect of them and be the dominating force the rest of the way through the series? I think very few people have what it takes to match Boise State. And I think that they definitely did on the first map. I don't think that we will fall into that same trap again. I think we have mm -hmm. fixed some of the things that were going wrong that enabled them to take that map off of us. And it's really unfortunate that they took that first map off of us, but I don't think it's gonna happen again. Well, we will already have our map ready to go. It is Dorado, picked up by Colorado College. I would assume Boise State will probably choose to defend first, maybe defend first, because I think they would have realized very quickly where they were. We will see where the Boise State lineup stands, though, as we mentioned, at a support change after the first map. Brought a large vehicle and chosen back in. I think D'Angelo, you and I both fully expect that to be the case the rest of the series, though, just to wrap things up here. Because you never want to let a team get you to game five, because then crazy things can happen. You also never, you also want to keep as many maps as you can, so it's not really in your interest to do something risking the loss when you could, with relative ease, as King Rose, as King's Row showed us, just win. We will see. And it's fully expected to be Boise State's same lineup. Plato, Kell, Goblin, Frost, a large bagel, and chosen in for the Broncos that we will see here in just a moment. And that is actually not the case. Maxwell will also come in. So Boise State will put the full lineup from our Colorado Mesa series back in. And you would have to think D'Angelo Russ no longer an issue for them. We'll see what Colorado College can do. They've been sticking with this pharmacy for so long. Poppinson and Chrome Z have made, faced some, uh, you know, play for Boise State, some counterplay in the skies. There is a tracer behind them, by the way. Inferno's trying to sneak up. Chosen's got to be careful using that healing grenade defensively on themselves. Doing a ton of damage, though, nearly taking that Mercy out of the sky. But it's Chosen looks maybe to be the first elimination. Never mind. Inferno and Chosen will go down at almost identically the same time. So now Boise State will have to defend with just a large bagel on that brig for the time being. See if Colorado College can get another pick. They do on the Maxwell. And Brig is occasionally more than enough, but she doesn't compare to an Ana. So I will say that Chromzy is not necessarily playing. Chromzy isn't getting punished for it because we don't have hit scan, but now we do because Goblin is on Ash. But Chromzy is not playing very conservatively as Mercy in order for that Ana to get her almost to elimination territory several times. So I think that's something that Chromzy will have to be more careful of now that we have Goblin on Ash. Nano's gonna go on to Boppinson, who immediately is gonna pick up a double kill on to both Boise State supports. They do take down Eevee, and now Boise State will take down Boppinson, so it is a slight advantage Boise State, but the Broncos have no healing on their side. A nice primal range there from Dreary is gonna be able to heal him up to full health, take health out of the mech, force the self-destruct out just for the reset. And now Boise State will have to once again reset here and see what Colorado College wants to do. Boise State has their full team back though, so it's going to be relatively difficult for anything to for Colorado College to get past. Chosen um, also, while we're talking about supports on both teams that need to play more conservatively, Chosen might need to do that, which they 100% are now. <laughs> yes, they are back on the back line. Still taking quite a bit of spam though from Poppinson who has that Rocket Barrage available. Full spot from Inferno, not gonna find anything about because the Chromesies 
going to start this fight for Colorado College, who's looking to get to the first payload. Nano is going to go out onto a large bagel, see if the rally will come out, and it will. And Maxwell picks up the first one as Bagel's just swinging that hammer around, trying to do as much damage as possible. Great rocket barrage. Robson will take out Chosen. Dreary gets one more on the goblins, but overall, Boise State comes out slightly ahead, but the respawn should favor Colorado College. That far mercy has it out for Chosen. That far is doing nothing but spamming Chosen. And I guess it's working because they get the elimination on the Chosen, but the rest of their team isn't really able to follow up on that because they haven't even managed to get first point. 60 seconds left, and D'Angelo just mentioned Colorado College for all this domination still can't get the first point. They'll trade one for one. Maxwell for Drury. Bob will get called in to even the odds. The Sparks will be taken out. Now Boise State's going to force one more reset. We're going to final fight for Colorado College. And it's not looking very good for Colorado College, but because they have both, Na because they're coming up on three, almost four. If they're far, I can get just a little bit more spam in there. They're coming up on four ultimates. And usually four ultimates is enough to win a fight. So I think that, that is their best chance here. They had just the one all. Maxwell immediately used that pulse bomb. Could not find any value. There's the primal rage. First all used there by Dreary. Boppinson though has not built anything. And a huge pick onto Evie. Plus the nano onto Jury stops Colorado College in their tracks. Spark will use a solo grab in a house away from the payload. Cromsey does get the revive out, but no Boppinson either. Means the rest of the team does have to stall to allow that pharmacy to come back, and I don't think they're gonna be able to stall long enough. Overtime will tick to a close. It wasn't clean, but Boise State holds them without a single point. That's gotta feel real bad for you there with the dying with Nano when it could have made a huge difference in that fight. Especially if you Nanoed the monkey, let him do his thing, and then he used Primal on the point, that monkey likely would have been able to get a couple of eliminations just because. Or Evie also had the option of nanoing the Farah to enable the Farah to charge her barrage much, much, because the Farah did charge the barrage by the end. Yep. So if the Farah had gotten nanoed, she did hit enough things that she would have charged barrage soon enough to actually have done something. So Evie's death wasn't necessarily the most significant thing that happened. It was the fact that they died before getting the nano out. That was incredibly Ready significant. Also, we're, while we're railing on Eevee, that Zarya grab was questionable <laughs> at best. Yeah, I don't know. It definitely even... did not do Colorado College any favors. Yeah, I don't know what Spark was I going for see. there on that solo grab. I mean, it was kind of a desperation. Kind of got caught in a corner in no man's land. This pharmacy though has been doing work though, as you mentioned, D'Angelo, yes. for Colorado College. It is one of the bright spots. Boppinson in particular has played a lot better. I thought Boise State would figure out a counter very quickly, go with some hit scan, clip the wings. But so far, Boppinson and Chromesley have played fantastically on this pharmacy. And if they want to hold and get a 2-1 advantage going into assault, Colorado College is going to need more spectacular pharmacy play. Ash is scary to a far out. But an unpocketed Ash isn't very, especially on a map like Dorado, where she can hide around rooftops, and when that Farah has a hard pocket themselves, it kind of makes Ash a little bit of a non Well, the pharmacy will be grounded, but by Colorado College choosing, and Boppinson is now on the Sombra, but it's Evie and Boppinson who are immediately eliminated. Goblet on this Echo here, just doing a ton of damage from the sky onto everybody. Does finally get stunned. But has a perfect pocket in the form of a large bagel. One more elimination, and Boise State's already pushing this payload. We see the difference between Spark and Kel as even. Because when Spark goes up to the Far Mercy, or the Echo Mercy in this case, they go, they go after the Echo. That's not what you do. You go after the Mercy. Because a Mercy can 100% pocket their Echo or their Farah through a Diva diving at them. But a Farah can't do anything if you're a Diva and you're on the Mercy. Mark will go down, the duplicate will come <laughs> out onto the Zenyatta for Goblin. Right now, Boise State has faced very little resistance. Kromzy will go dashing in, but it does not appear that that is going to be enough to do anything for Colorado College at Boise State. will once again make quick work of them and put themselves on match point rather quickly. I don't know if anything came from that map other than we realized why Goblin is not a Zenyatta player. 
<laughs> and we realized the difference between Spark and Kel as D.Va players. Because that is a, like, it's a relatively micro thing, you would think, but it makes a massive difference. Robinson picking up play of the game. We saw there just had an eye out for Chosen and a large bagel to a lesser extent. Robinson's target focus on that pharmacy was spectacular. Unfortunately, was not enough to get it done. Don't forget, you can score pro advice at esportstower.com. Improve your game sense, improve your team play, improve your performance under pressure. You can match with great players and professional coaches to help you rank up. If you're in high school, you want to check them out, esportstower.com. Well, before we take a break and go to map four, which will be assault in Colorado College's choice, D'Angelo, it looks like Boise State. They brought in the squad. They know they can get the job done. And Colorado College, besides Boppetson, really didn't have an answer. Boppetson also was hard carried by their mercy. They wouldn't have been able to do the things that they were doing if they didn't. Because, mm -hmm. like I said, if the Farah has the mercy pocket, but the Ash does not, that especially on a map like Dorado where you can hide around the rooftops, that is something that makes a very big impact. And that is something that Boppetson used to their advantage we saw in the play of the game using the rooftops mm -hmm. to their advantage, which is absolutely stellar to watch. And as actually one of my favorite things to see is people using the maps in the air like that in place, because you don't really know how map geometry always works around exactly. rooftops. There are some famous like Doomfist spots where you can use your ultimate to get up to places that you don't think you should be able to <laughs> just because the map geometry is weird. We've and seen Goblin do that a lot. Yes, to an extent, <laughs> unrealistic. So it's especially interesting to watch somebody navigate that. Well, we will take a quick break. We'll be back with map four. It's Boise State on match point. Can they get it done against Colorado College on everybody's favorite map style assault? We will find <laughs> out after this break. NationalGuard.com to begin your guard adventure. Here are a couple lessons I've learned over the years. Friendships come in all shapes and sizes. And always buckle up. Seatbelts save lives. That's a rule we can all live by. Wombo. Back into the Boise State Gay Pants Esports Arena, continuing our coverage of NACE Collegiate Overwatch, heading into map number four for the first time all season. It's everybody's favorite game mode, Assault. We know we are going to Anubis, a temple of Anubis, that is, D'Angelo, which you at least said is the best Assault map, and also a map that I think you and I agree on supports the one thing Colorado College has going for them if they want to pull this upset, want to get this to a game five, and that is Boppetson and that Farmer, Far Mercy. Boppetson on the Farah, I think, will have a time on Temple of Anubis. But also, Temple of Anubis supports Hitscan. 
and hit scan pocketing, we which are, makes Vara harder to play. We are ready to hop right into it. We in Boise State and Colorado College. See if there is indeed going to be a pharmacy on the side of Colorado College in the red. And so far, it does not look to be that way. Boise State will still have the Echo and the Fara. Or the Echo and the Mercy, excuse me. We will see. We talked about this from Sparks POV. Has got to find a way to get onto a large bagel on that Mercy and not spend so much time focusing down Maxwell now on the Echo. And so far, Colorado College really hasn't found a way in. They actually do have their own Echo and Mercy this time. So Boppinson changing up, but still up in the air. And really, no one's found an elimination. You get a nice backline high ground flank from the side of Colorado College, and immediately Echo will go down. Probesy will follow. And now with that, two huge components of the Colorado College squad down. The rest of them will follow in short order. Typically, as Echo, you want to wait until the Ash is not staring you in the face yeah, before you dive her. <laughs> um, I think I 100% believe that Bobison was expecting Goblin to panic. Was expecting Gob to panic and to not be able to do anything because he was being dove by an Echo. But Gob is a high ELO player. He's not going to panic. Goblin will immediately call in Bob to help things out as a nice eat on the pulse bomb there from Kells. Gonna stop what Infernal is looking to do on a backline flank. Poppinson once again put a ground echo this time. Cromsey will follow right afterwards. And now Colorado College needs somebody else to step up the angle besides those two. Because Boppinson and Cromsey are not currently getting it done just because of the dominance of Gobs Ash, who we are on POV of. Gobs mostly unpocketed Ash. Like he's just been flanking and just been after the echo. See you there. We've got a great POV of this, as you mentioned. Goblin is looking for that echo at all times. Does get a Winston up in his face as Chromesy will pop that Valkyrie to get a little bit more mobility going for the time being. Maxwell very low will duplicate onto the Diva. We also see a large Bagel with a Valkyrie plus an Ant Matrix. And so far, everybody's staying alive. Eevee barely holding on. Got a great Nano on to Jury to get that Primal Rage online. Finally, EV will go down, but Jury will trade it out, taking out Goblin. We'll see if a large bagel can look for the res. We have not seen a Mercy res yet. There it is. Boppinson, meanwhile, will be taken down. Chromesy will follow right after. Those two have gone down almost simultaneously. Three fights in a row, and Boise State will once again force a reset. And it looks like Kel is saving a Diva Bomb for either a mech reset or to take the Colorado College aerial squad out of the air in quick fashion. I think Inferno's job is going to be to get on the app. I think that's what they're trying to do here because he can't out-snipe him as we've seen Gob headshot the Widowmaker <laughs> win the duel without pockets from distance. Bob will be called in from above. Aerial support. 60 seconds left. Goblin is just raining down terror. He knows exactly where that echo is. Looking to get some damage onto Boppinson. Great set of dynamite as well. Now looking for a great pick onto Eevee, but the statue will block it. Colorado College running out of time. Probably their last fight is Inferno now on that Sombra. Not for long, though. And I think Colorado College maybe reset for a final try in a 66. And I don't know that they're going to get a lot out of their final try. Oh, maybe. Oh, well, they can double is. pick. They do get a revive onto Maxwell. Plus, Probesy takes it down. Nano's going to go onto Tree to try and help him build a primal rage for one more fight. A large bagel also taken out. Potentially the best chance for Colorado College. But as I say that, they will lose okay. two members. Time now ticking down. Kel, the projector of the point. Go for the Diva Bomb there. Should be able to survive. Gets the reset as well in the mech. Final chance here. And Matrix goes down. Boppinson will fall to the ground. Chose Chromesy, excuse me, racing in for the res. Cannot find it. And Boise State will hold another zero across the board for Colorado College. Hell, protector of the point, defender of the ticks. Ruiner of Colorado College's plans. They really wanted that. There was an Echo and a Monkey that really wanted Kel down, but they couldn't capitalize on it because he bombed and then remacked and held that bomb to use it as a reset. I think that is a big part of Kel's play is using that bomb as a reset on the point. And I think that has saved Boise. I, I don't know that Colorado College would have full capped mm -hmm. if Kel hadn't done that. But it's preventing them from even getting ticks. He did it on, Kel did it on King's Row, and he's doing it now on Temple of Anubis. And I think Boise State has their work um, cut out for them in the best way possible Ready for that. Battle.
since map one where Boise State kind of got dominated by Colorado College. They have not allowed Colorado College to get a single tick on any objective. Not on hybrid, not on escort, so they came very close. And not on assault. We'll see if Boise State can make quick work of them, pick up the victory after a sluggish start. Meanwhile, for Colorado College, I think Poppinson's gonna have to have probably the map half of his life, D'Angelo, or their life. I think that they're, I think even if they did, it's a team game and Boise State's falling on all cylinders. So even if Boppinson really got it together with the hard mercy pocket there, I don't think that, I don't think they can pull it out. What if they only land headshots the entire map? Headshots on far. Like 100% headshots. 100% far headshots? Yeah. Yep. Maybe. That Boppinson, though, he's actually on the McCree. He's not even on the Fara. Defensively, if Boise State's gonna hop right on top of them, but a large bagel actually does get eliminated first. A great starting pick there for Colorado College, and it's gonna force a reset from Boise State, unless Boise State's looking for a cheeky flank, but I don't think that's the case. And Boise State definitely has plenty of time to reset a little bit. And it looks like both of Boise State's DPS are currently hard counter, so I would maybe consider swapping those, what Big Castle is doing. Goblin looks to be doing the exact same. Yep. <laughs> they will swap over to the double sniper. Great job by Boise State. They thought for a moment they might hold for a nano blade, but as you called D'Angelo, realizing they were countered, and we always talk about how a hey, just holding for an ult is not always the right play. You see, they still cannot break this high ground double shield cop. The Colorado College has thrown up them. There is the Nano going to go on to Plato. He will jump right into the fray, looking for the first elimination, but it's Kel who's going to lose the mech first. Plato just can't quite find the jump, but Goblin will get the first official elimination on to Eevee. Plato barely holding on, trying to build that primal rage as a dead eye from Boppinson gets one. And Boise State forced for another reset. Though it didn't show up in the kill feed, I think Boise State is a little bit getting turret diff right now. I think that turret in the upper right hand corner right as you come in is giving Boise State a lot of grief. It put at least like 500 damage on Plato alone in that engage. And the turret actually was what eliminated Hell's men. As Boise State has seen half their time in the bank tick by. They only need one tick on this assault point to win the map. Big! Huge anti does land, but a supercharger from Spark does come out. And Kel once again will lose the mech and be immediately eliminated. Goblin though has a great flank trying to build this Dragon Strike. But gets stunned and has to try and walk away as Maxwell now on the Echo will fall. And Boise State once again has to look for a reset. A huge Dragon Strike here could be the here difference. It there it comes through. Tanks are split. Great immortality field keeps him alive. Molten Corp from Inferno takes down Chosen. Dreary will get a pick on the Goblin. They also get the rally from Cozy, and now Boise State is down to their final 90 seconds. The Colorado College tanks have decided that they don't need the team to walk into Boise State, and it actually worked pretty well for them. I think what Boise State needs to do is Colorado College used a lot of holes to hold that. That's kind of expected that they hold that because they use so many holes. But now Boise State has all of their old so as long as we can get Kel to survive until we can get an elimination and not have Kel pick first, I think we can win this. is going to be used, but a great Deadeye from Boppinson is going to immediately eliminate a large bagel. Plato will go down as well. Boy State probably has to offer a reset unless a huge Gravitic Flux from Maxwell on the duplicate can make something happen. He'll slam them back down, but will not find any value. And it looks like Boise State's gonna get one last staggered recontest on the point. And that's really unfortunate. A large bagel got picked by the Deadeye, and that was definitely not what we were looking for. That, I think, that coupled with a lot of other things fell that fight loss for Boise State. We'll see if they can pull it together. I really hope so. Final chance here for Boise State. 10 seconds left, but a great ant matrix from Eevee immediately leads to an elimination for Maxwell. A large bagel will go down as well. And everyone's favorite game mode proves why everyone loves it. Neither team can even get on the point, and we have ourselves a draw, D'Angelo.
I think the biggest thing that Boise State struggled with there is we were not respecting the Colorado College spam at all. And considering Colorado College was running a full spam comp and we were walking in front of amplification notices, granted it was to contest, to try to contest the point in overtime. So somewhat understandable, but like, Boise State was not respecting Colorado College's spam at all on that Temple of Anubis fight. Boise State Esports, by the way, always looking for talented players, production and broadcast talent. Top talent along with good grades and eligibility can earn you scholarships as well. Sign up today by visiting boisestate.edu slash esports for more information. Well, if you had on your bingo sheet, we're going to a map number five. Congratulations, you should go buy yourself a lottery ticket of course, not officially map five in the sense that it's win or go home, D'Angelo, because we are going to have to have a tie break eventually if Colorado College can force us there. But overall, I mean, Boise State, I don't know what happened. I mean, I guess, you know what, we can also just chalk it up to that's assault being assault. Because as we talk about all the time, an assault, the moment you lose one member, makes it really, really hard to push. I don't actually think that, that was assault being assault because most of the assault crappiness comes on second point when their respawns are literally instant. True. So you lose one member and you lose the entire fight, especially if it's like your support. If you lose your support on second point on assault, it doesn't even matter <laughs> if you kill the entire team because they're all going to be right back. Like you lose the support, you need to reset is basically how that works. Um, so, uh, no, I don't think that first point was actually assault being assault. I think that there was a intense choke point, and we didn't respect their spam at all. Well, we're going to go to break. We'll be back with map number five. We might even need a map number six the way this series is going. Boise State, Colorado College, we've got more coming up after this. Oh, never mind. We're not taking a break. <laughs> we're going to stay with it with fair reason because, again, we might have to have a tiebreaker. We'll have to figure out exactly what the tiebreaker rules will be. We'll go back to control, though, which – we can't play the same one. Of course, it, it is Colorado College's choice, if I do understand correctly, because they had the last map pick. Do you think they go with Nepal or, or Oasis here, D'Angelo? I think Nepal would benefit their Farmercy more because Nepal is just a more Farmercy-friendly map in general. I don't think that they should pick Oasis based on what I've seen from this team. I do actually think that they are perhaps capable of taking this from Boise State because of what they showed us on Temple of Anubis, that spam that Boise State was just walking into. I sincerely hope Boise State has a better answer to whatever they're going to run on Nepal than they just did Temple of Anubis. Because I actually think that the biggest problem Boise State had on that map was no like counterplay or counter strategizing and no respect for the amount of damage that Colorado College was pumping out with that spam comp. Well, it is map number five. Again, though, it is forced off a tiebreaker or a tie on assault. So we might actually have a map six. We'll try and figure out where that will be if Colorado College wins. Right now, Boise State can still pick up the victory on control. As they are going to once again have Plato Kel, Goblin, Maxwell, Chosen, and a large bagel all in the fray. We do have a bit of a different comp for Boise State, a bit of their own spam comp here. It's Goblin just trying to lob grenades down on the side of Colorado College. So far, no one taking really too much damage, though. We'll see what Boise State wants to do if they get an elimination. They get the Orb of Discord on to Dreary. It's going to be immediately stopped, though. Inferno now making his appearance on the tour. Not something we have seen too much of. Boppinson, Big. first elimination. He's been the MVP for Colorado College. What can Boise State do off that? There's an immortality field down. It gets taken out. Now Boise State has to push the advantage. Boppinson respawns immediately, swaps to the Hansel, looking to get back in the fight. But Maxwell across the map doing just a ton of damage. Spark goes down, and Boise State's going to build this lead. Maxwell took out that turret every time it came up. And while I think that was kind of the unsung hero of that fight, because obviously you have Goblin who made the big play and who eliminated people, you have a large bagel who got the first elimination there that enabled Boise State to really push. But I do think that Maxwell was kind of the unsung hero of that fight. And Boise State needs to watch out now for Colorado College's probably Gravitic Flux and Amplification Matrix Fields. And probably ult first is what we really want to do right now, ult as Colorado College approaches. Colorado College will start walking towards Boise State. The check marks remain held for now. And Matrix from Eevee is going to be the thing that starts it off. But I think Maxwell's looking for a huge tack visor flank. It's chosen 
We'll throw down in his own Ant Matrix, but it's Inferno with an insane double kill. Maxwell's just trying to find value as Kel does get one. Gets another one from behind, and now we see a great transcendence from a large bagel keeping everyone alive. Chromesy with the rally. Maxwell just spraying damage in from the other side of the map. Bobson will get an elimination onto Goblin who had that rip tire, but Boise State has pushed this point up over 70%. Kel looking to contest, probably going to wait for the last the moment. Point. There it is. As you said, Kel, defender of the point. Can he do it one more time? Should have the diva ball for their... No, he won't. 2% short, actually, but a great tack visor there from Maxwell. As they lead to a huge triple kill for Boise State. They'll lose one in the process, but that should force Colorado College to last fight. Kel, defender of the point. We see it again. Nobody gets any ticks. Nobody gets any percentage as long as Kel is still living. Be a huge rip tire oh, right sucks. into Evie and Boise State 100 zeros on map one. Evie probably wouldn't have been able to make it to the point anyway, but that's gotta suck. <laughs> You're trying for getting solo rip tired out of nowhere. That's definitely always a it feels bad thing. You're trying for that like cheeky little flank, help your team out. Yeah, as you nope. said, you, you just need a rip tire to the face. Boise State now, map point, match point. Could Colorado College rally for a game three on control? After how that map went, there were some bright spots, D'Angelo, but they just never could chain them into actually, actually getting on the point because Kel, protector of the point, just shut them down. I think Boise State is respecting Colorado College's spam much more wow. than they were previously, and it's also much easier on control where you don't have such a focused point, such a focused defensive point as Temple of Anubis' first point is, because I think that was also part of their problem. But also part of the problem was they kept throwing Monkey and Diva at it and getting Insta eliminated. Here we go. Let's see what Boise State can do. They already have Eevee, Dreary, Bobbitson, oh. and Inferno all low, but it's Bobbitson who gets the first elimination onto Maxwell. Goblin going to be forced to shadow step to safety, looking for a backline flank. Eevee's the first one eliminated. Crozy will go down as well. Goblin will pick up a one in the back onto Spark, but Dreary not trying to let his team go down. Gets a great elimination. Goblin once again going to teleport right on top of the point. Get one more. Looking for a kill onto Inferno and Bobson. Does high mobility DPS get away? Goblin doesn't shadow step to safety. Goblin shadow steps into the enemy team's back line and proceeds to put none of them even like looked at him there was just this reaper pumping damage and just murdering them and none of them even like looked at him and did anything significant to try to stop it except for bobson just now but he will likely be, be back before the fight starts yeah fortunately for bobson he wasn't fast enough to save evie who now has respawned and goblin has as well inferno and maxel in a battle of the tracers Ooh, nice. And Max will win that one pretty easily there. Still over 100 life left. And now we'll see what Colorado College can do as they're looking to get on this point, but really haven't made any forward progress. Well, they they really can't because Max was in their spawn camping there Zenyatta. That's why he was this one, but now he's since left. But it looks like their Zenyatta's getting spawn camped in a different way anyway. Goblin, even though he has died, has killed Eevee both times on that Zenyatta. They will both respawn for Boise State up above 50%. Though if you are a Colorado College fan, Bobbinson has the EMP. A large bagel is not even close to the sound barrier. That could potentially be a winner, but how about a three-man shatter? Bobbinson will throw out a Hail Mary EMP as he goes down. But unfortunately, it's not going to be enough. Boise State will lose Maxwell in the fight, but will win everything else. Plato, oh, nice Plato knew that Bobbinson had that EMP, and so he just shattered hers because that's what we needed to do. The EMP could have won the fight, but if you can't, you can't if your entire team's already laid out, and they even wasted the EMP. So if you're a Colorado College fan, things are looking really uncomfortable. Last fight here for Colorado College. They've lost their Wrecking Ball. They've lost their Sombra as well. They do not have a single alt available. That is probably the game right there. They'll try and hold overtime with Inferno and Spark, and Dreary has respawned as well. Spark will go down. Dreary will fall to the Death Blossom, and it wasn't as clean as Boise State had hoped, but in the end, Broncos will still come out victorious. And you know, that's all that really matters is that Boise State came out victorious. It was a little rough, but on the heels of Goblin doing 
way more damage than anyone was prepared for. As both Junkrat and Reaper, here we are. Goblin on the Junkrat gets the play of the game. Boise State, a 3-1 victory over Colorado College that of course included a tie as well. Boise State that will remain undefeated Moving to 7-0 and in Nay. So big congratulations to them. As we said, maybe a little bit more tougher than they expected, but that also just shows the quality of opponent that Colorado College was. And Boise State, in the end, rallied the troops, got things done, made a couple of changes, and that was all they needed to do to remain undefeated, D'Angelo. Just for a reminder, never mind, we won't remind anyone. We'll just remind everyone that Boise State's still undefeated, and we'll let you make your starting predictions for the ICCU player of the game or give your final thoughts on the match your choice. I think Maxel did a good job of being the unsung hero. I mentioned it several times. Maxel was kind of cross-angling, playing mm -hmm. separate from the entire rest of his team, putting a ton of dam damage onto their back line that was ultimately healed. But that's not the point. That, that, that's not what Maxel was trying to do. Maxel was not necessarily trying to get eliminations. He was trying to pressure their healers and mm -hmm. their team in general into making mistakes or doing something that the rest of the team could take advantage of. So Goblin was really successful getting a lot of eliminations especially on the inner sanctum point off of the heels of Maxel putting all of that pressure onto them on the open point on outside of Nepal that was just Goblin running around his Reaper and Reaper's a relatively off meta pick right now mm -hmm. so no one was prepared for him to pick Reaper <laughs> and I feel like Reaper just does a shocking amount yeah. of damage once he's within like 10 meters of you it is like genuinely surprising the amount of damage that a Reaper can do when they get into melee range. Like, all tanks are aware of this. All tanks have, like, <laughs> nightmares of, yes. like, Reaper and Roadhog in their face. Like, oh, geez, I can't do anything against these heroes. But for, like, the rest of the 200 HP heroes that, for the most part, can stay away from a Reaper, once that Reaper is already there, he does a truly shocking amount of damage, Fish. I think Eevee will now have nightmares about Reaper I as think you're well. Right. Because Goblin was just firing him. Well, so we prepare to wrap up on the Boise State victory. We still have our ICCU player of the game for this match, D'Angelo. Your nominations, I know you were just really praising Maxwell there. Is that going to be your pick, or do you have something else up your sleeve? No, I don't think that we would have, um, for lack of a better I don't think that we would have the highlight reel <laughs> that we would for Maxwell that we would for, like, Goblin, because I think Goblin is going to end up being player of the game mm -hmm. for a variety of reasons. But I do think that doesn't mean that he was the most important member of the team at all times. He just has the most clippable plays, True. Fish. And he does do an amazing job on DPS. Like, as we see him spawn camp the Mercy here in that play, just by standing there and, like, lightly strafing and spamming. And then his play on the Ash was phenomenal, and it was mostly unpocketed, but he was able to completely shut down Boppinston, no matter who is defending, like Diva defending yeah. him doesn't matter. Boppinston back in spawn and then takes out the Mercy later. And he did all of that for the most part without a Mercy pocket. Like it was like in and out. Yeah, Goblin was phenomenal. All three maps that Boise State won, Goblin did a fantastic job, and he is the ICCU player of the game. Brought to us by Idaho Central Credit Union, who believes a great player makes a team more successful, just like Idaho Central's helping members achieve financial success. Goblin is your ICCU player of the game. Well, it's a 2-0 night for Boise State. They take down Colorado Mesa in play versus. They take down Colorado College in Nace. As we prepare to wrap things up, put a bow on everything, D'Angelo, move to undefeated. What are your final takeaways from a challenging opponent in Colorado College that we eventually got the best of? Kel, defender of the point yes. also, who is something that, who is somebody that I did not mention. Also, Chosen's exceptional Baptiste play. We saw that a lot, mm -hmm. particularly in denying the far mercy. I think that is I think Chosen is a big reason why they decided to swap off that in the first place to the Echo and then later to other heroes. I think there is something to be said about everybody on the Boise State team, but I think my main takeaways from tonight are Kel, the defender of the point. I mean, Goblin, as usual, he gets a limb, so that's just what he does. Yeah. But also, Maxwell is an incredible DPS on the side of Boise State. And while he doesn't get the highlight reels that Goblin does, that mm -hmm. does not mean he is lesser of a player because I actually think that he is of equal importance to Goblin in everything that he does. And I think mm -hmm. it's especially cool that, like, he – because traditionally you play DPS to, like, get 
the highlight reel. Like, yeah. that's the oh, expectation, yeah. is if you're a DPS, you're able to get those highlight reels. But Maxwell is completely comfortable with, like, not doing that and with just benefiting his team. And I think that that is something that definitely needs mention because that's what he did on yeah. Soldier. Oh, yeah. He just applied pressure. He didn't get any kills. He didn't get any, like shiny gold medals <laughs> for all of his work, but he really was putting in work that his team couldn't have done anything without. Well, we will wrap this one up with another Bronco win. As we said, a little bit scarier than normal, but still in the end, the Broncos stay undefeated. We will leave you with our top five plays of the night presented by the Idaho Army National Guard. We advise you to take your impressive critical thinking skills into real time. More than 10 jobs offering a $20,000 bonus and your degree of choice paid for. The Idaho Army National Guard is the best team out there. Reach out on Twitch at iGuard Gaming. And here are your top five plays for the Broncos 3-1 win in NACE over Colorado College. Start this fight with 34 seconds on the clock. Boffinson taking incredibly low. It will be healed back up the pool. They're going to burn down the Mercy right out of the sky to make it three go down for Colorado College. They reset now. They can force one more fight. So Boffinson changing up. It's still up in the air. Really, no one's found an elimination. You get a nice back line high ground flank from the side of Colorado College and immediately Echo will go down. Proxy will follow. And now with that, two huge components to Colorado College squad down. The rest of them will follow in short order. Another will immediately call in Bob to help things out. There's a nice eat on the post bomb there from Kel to stop what Colonel is looking to do on a back line flank. Robinson once again. The ground echo this time. Proxy will follow right afterwards. And now, oh, I apologize. Somebody else step up the angle besides those two. And Boston has the EMP. A large bank will not be doing close to the sound there. That could potentially be a winner. But how about a three man shatter? Boffinson will throw out a Hail Mary EMP as he goes down. But unfortunately, it's not going to be enough. Boise State will lose Maxwell in the fight, but will win everything else. Plato.